So thank you once again for joining our next Ambassador Masterclass, the Words in Nature Masterclass. And today we have um, Benjamin, who is our ambassador, who's joining us. Um, he will introduce himself in just a minute. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you for joining the second Masterclass and in your very busy lunch breaks. I completely appreciate it. It shows your dedication and that you are a force for nature. Can I just ask as well a gentle reminder that I know you had some amazing ideas last week in Harry's story in Nature Masterclass. So if you've managed to get those down on paper, if you've managed to wrap them up into a short story or an extract from a story or a character description, whatever you've managed to create as your mission, um, please do send them across to us. And the email address for that will be on the slide at the end. Um, where you can also share your missions that you've completed at the end of this one. So we would love to see the words that you're creating, the work that you're producing, and we hope to create a bit of an anthology at the end of these sessions, um, showcasing the amazing work that you've been doing during them. So please do um, share them, send us an email um, with some of that, those words and work in. So I will hand over to Benjamin next, who will introduce himself and tell you a little bit about who he is and what we're going to be doing today. Hello everyone. Uh, just before we go into introductions, etc. Katie, you've got the presentation notes, etc. on screen at the moment. Fabulous. Thank you for mentioning that. That's helpful to know. Um, give me just one second. Well, yeah, while, while Katie's doing that, I'll introduce myself. So, hi, I'm Benjamin Haycock. I'm a singer-songwriter, musician, producer, um, based here in Devon, formerly from Birmingham, grew up in Birmingham, etc. Um, probably don't have any Brummies in the call, but maybe some people in the north, which is not Birmingham, as uh, Katie informs me being from the north, but uh, the Midlands nonetheless. Um, so I'm also a senior ambassador for the Tree Council, have worked freelance now for the Tree Council in different roles. Um, really interesting thing at the moment is we're doing a tour around the UK, so I've created this soundscape and we work on this wonderful company called Squid Soup and going around the UK to some of the biggest venues in the country, uh, Birmingham Botanic Gardens, National History Museum, Hampton Court Palace, and we're going to be sharing the soundscape that I've created in conjunction with the Tree Council that include all voices um, from some of our beacon schools across the UK and out of those voices about your aspirations, your uh, wants in terms of governmental stuff. We, we include all of that within the soundscape. So it's it's your voice and we've created music around it to create something really special. So, so yeah, that's a bit about me. Um, today we're going to be doing the first part of a two part series. Um, so the first one is Words in Nature and the second next week at this time is going to be Spoken Word in Nature. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, please, Katie. Uh, learning objective, don't want to go into too much um, wordy things today. So by all means, if you don't want to look at the presentation and look at me and just kind of use it as a bit of a reference point, that's perfect as well. I know you've been in class all morning, you're going to be this afternoon, so I don't want this to feel like a lesson at all, but rather something that's quite interactive. Okay, um, so we'll go on to the next slide, but essentially uh, we're going to be developing effective language techniques to describe nature and your love for nature and your wonder for nature. So, next slide, please. Okay, so um, not sure how many we actually have in the book. Katie can help me with this. Um, I think we've just got the one class potentially and I can't see them. So um, usually this is a bit more interactive, but we'll just do that anyway. So the first video that I'm going to be showing, the only video really, is of an amazing spoken word artist that I really want to portray his work. Uh, he's called George the Poet. Maybe some of you would have known him. He's done tracks with um, uh, Maverick Sabre. Uh, has done tracks with a few grime artists and drill artists over the last few years. But he's a spoken word artist within that scene. So he works with rappers, he works with singers and artists, and he uses this very poetic spoken word to create something very unique on those tracks. And this is one of them that he's actually done called The Natural World that he done on behalf of the big uh, National Lottery Fund. Um, and this is all about his love for nature. So if Katie could play that, please. I am the natural world. It serves my needs, my words, my deeds. I'm a part of nature, like the birds and bees, like the ferns, the seeds, the dirt, the trees. We complement each other perfectly, giving each other balance and certainty. Just look around, there's life everywhere. The sky, the earth, the sea. Ain't it crazy how we're connected? Don't you think it's cool how we're linked? 
the one thing we all have in common is life. Let's not fall out of sync. Let's celebrate nature in our day to day, at home, at work, in how we talk, how we think. It starts with recognizing we're part of it all. Nature's reaching out. Let's answer the call. Benjamin, you're on mute there. Just, I can see that you're saying some very exciting things. <laughs> just, <laughs> probably I'm just not. imagining yeah. what they are. <laughs> that's using your imagination, which actually goes towards the next section. That's a brilliant transition. I've done that. On <laughs> um, okay, so I was just saying, apart from trying to unpick his physicality and the way that he expressed it, which is going to be the next session, I want to just focus on some of the words he was using. Okay, so obviously he was using his wonderful nature, life words like trees and seeds and the rest of it okay so very kind of simplistic poetry simplistic words but it feels very personal it feels like an interlude in an album almost where you're listening to the album and it's a bunch of songs and it's kind of on the radio and then all of a sudden you listen to an interlude which draws you back in and that's what we're trying to do here okay so whether it's a song or or just a poem or even a few sentences that make up a spoken word piece we want to engage the listener via something that's really personal to us. So the first starter, and I know it's not going to be that kind of back and forth in this one, but I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes. So we're going to list up to five wonders of nature. So these can be objects, ideas, places, um, phenomenons that you think are truly amazing and magical. Um, and be prepared to feedback your ideas and reasons for picking them. So um, the second point maybe is not that relevant, but if I give you a couple of minutes to do the first one, so list up to five wonders of nature to you, make them as personal as possible. And the idea is sub subsequently, we're going to create some kind of spoken word or poetry out of them. So as personal as it gets, your five wonders of nature. As it says in there, it could be an object, it could be a, a thing in nature, it could be an event that happens in nature every year or every few years or every season. Um, we had some interesting ideas from the last session that we did on this. Far yeah. more creative than mine. So whatever yeah. it is that you're that you speaks up to you, okay. that sticks in your mind. They provide oxygen for all animals to breathe. That's brilliant. I mean, that is pretty wondrous, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, right. Continue writing in the chat. So try and focus on five wonders of nature. Um, so focus less on definitions or what it necessarily provides at this stage, but something very personal to those who are listening. Um, it could be mountains. I mean, I, for one, when I see mountains or go to a beautiful beach and see the cliffs, um, I just am completely inspired completely overall with almost emotion in that moment wherever I've been during the week whatever I've done however stressed maybe my my week has been um one walk on a beach and and suddenly I feel refreshed so that's another word I'd use and 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 we start building it that way so rivers they provide habitats available water and transport brilliant that's amazing we get a couple more and then we'll move on um so trees and rivers so yeah th th think of some places that may be a bit more personable to you so this could be in your local area that maybe you visit or, or maybe even on a holiday or something somewhere that you visited which really inspires you and have made you feel these emotions of whether it be peace whether it be inspiration whether it be excitement etc or it might be somewhere you've seen and you think Do you know what at some point in my life i would yeah. love to be standing there yeah. in that landscape to see that site it can be something big and it can be something tiny for me it's a bit cliche but the acorn I always find an amazing wonder of nature yeah. that this tiny little seed becomes this hundreds of year old oak tree that you yeah. know stands the test of time can tell all sorts of stories no doubt yeah and that's a really personable one to Katie like that's that's seemingly simplistic and yet beautiful in its simplicity and that's kind of what we're trying to do here initially Kate's just demonstrated that perfectly. 
So I think you're doing yourself a disservice, Katie, in terms of creativity. <laughs> um, yes, a natural archway in the shape of a door one of us has visited. Oh, amazing. I would. That's one one of those places I'd like to go to, and I haven't, and at some point in my life, I'd love to go to Dirtle Door before it wears away. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I might put that on my bucket list for this year. <laughs> You've inspired right. us, whoever that was. Absolutely. Thank you, Matthew, for all of those. Should we move on? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll, we'll just go through this quickly. So thinking of your words in nature. Um, so now just quickly, if we can put really quickly on the chat, don't want to go into this too much, but what words can you use to describe those words that you put in the chat? So you put dirt or door, river, um, what was the other one? I'll just trees. On the chat. Trees, okay. So we want to use words now that can describe it, which you kind of have already. Um, and then the secondly, and this is important thing because it builds an emotive, descriptive landscape in which is your foundation for your creative writing. How does it move? How does it make you feel? Okay. So we've gone into within, I think Matthew put three things that are, you know, very descriptive, et cetera. So you kind of covered the first one, but regarding the second two, so how does it move? So think about it creatively, you know, I think, I think a lot of the time when we think of objects in general, particularly natural objects, we don't really think unless it's the sea, how it moves. We don't think, okay, uh, there's a mountain or something, right? How can we describe how it moves, right? It's very stationary a mountain, but also it may move us in a way. How does it make you feel? So a couple of words in the chat regarding that, but we won't do it for too long and then we'll, we'll probably move on. Um, if that's okay, Katie. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So move my on. acorn might, yeah. um, the tiny acorn might tumble um, haphazardly to the ground. Oof. Um leaving a seed of hope. Wow, there you go. Hey, hey, can I um can I credit that in one of my songs? Do, do I get a round of applause for that? Thanks. Yeah, you <laughs> Thanks. You, you might get I didn't a even, I on didn't even have a working didn't have a working camera last session. I'm absolutely <laughs> looking it up today. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, if we move on to the next slide, we'll we'll just plow through. Yeah, yeah any ideas? Oh, we've got one in the chat. And yes. if, if you don't have time to share it now or finish it now, then you might use it later on in the session. Of course. A very fluid <laughs> session, guys. So if there's something that inspires you now and that you kind of want to put down in your work <laughs> when you're working on your own creative writing, put it down by all means. That's what it's all about, okay? Meander's a great word in that one. Well done. Yes, meander mm -hmm. and life. Life is the word, isn't it, today? Life. Okay, so we're going to do this again quite briefly. Um, but acrostic creativity. So now we've got the base words that we can use, and some of these you can use within the acrostic creativity. We're going to create an acrostic. If you just go on the next slide, yeah, we're going to create an acrostic. Okay, so we've got nature and tree. So this should be pretty simplistic. However, I want you to kind of think out the box a bit. This will evoke our creativity and hopefully provide a foundation of words that will be the bedrock of our creative writing in a minute so if we can do this for now so those who are listening uh, whether it be on the recording or here live can you just work on an acrostic please a couple of minutes i'll let katie say a bit more while we go on to the next one and then we'll probably move on but yeah if you can just put some in the chat if you do think of some these can be so you can be words. yeah you can be using single words to do with nature they might all relate to each other. They might be completely random, but linked to nature. Yeah. So for that first one, so you might have, um, this is me counting the letters in nature. You might have six random words that are linked to nature, but aren't connected to each other. <clears throat> and that could form your acrostic. You might use phrases instead of words. It makes it a little bit more challenging, but it flows a little bit more. So you might have um, phrases such as, um, um, a ne never ending meander, for example, I'm stealing your word there. Um, and they might all link to the same thing. So they might all link to one element of nature. So you can decide how challenging you're gonna make this, but it mm. gets those brain ticking, ideas flowing of words that you might use later on as well. I think that's it. I think amongst Katie's brilliance on this call, she's <laughs> you hit a mental block and that's what all of us writers face is a creative writing block, right? At some point whether you're Charles Dickens, it doesn't matter, right? Everyone hits a writing block at some point. Things like this, activities like this, are a great tool in order to completely remove that writer's block and get you in a place of creativity again. 
that isn't just formatted and just writing on a page. You'll do something a bit more, a bit more of like a game or an activity, but it does make you think. It really does. So shall okay. I share your ideas on this one? Yeah, yeah, go to the next slide if we can. And then, yeah, so, so these are pretty simple. Um, these are kind of universal. So natural world, animals, trees, unique landscapes, reeds, environment, and then kind of the next level of that, which is tree, towering above us, reaching for the sky, earth's great protector, enchanting our minds. So something quite simple, that rhymes, it doesn't necessarily need to. Um, I'm just trying to put in a bit of poetry before we go on to the next bit, which kind of ramps up the level of creativity. But but yeah, hopefully you've got something. If you can put it in the chat, that would be brilliant. That'd be amazing to do so. Um, Katie, do you want a quick go? Uh, You're on yeah, today. I'm challenging go on you then. I mean, spot, absolutely but... putting me on the spot there. I mean, I could just read out the one in the chat. And absolutely I'll read the one in the chat while you think of yours. <laughs> let's, let's do it like that. So uh, this is brilliant. So natural, animalistic, terrific. I was going to put something undergrowth realistic environmental nature brilliant that's amazing i wonder matthew if you guys within the call can challenge you yourself on the tree so can you do it uh, maybe a few words or a phrase or a sentence it can rhyme it cannot rhyme but perhaps challenge yourself slightly more so the different levels to it so now you've got the words as a base level can you now describe tree via an acrostic let's see if you can do it so a few minutes on that just while katie thinks of hers as well Okay, what have we got so far, Katie? What are you coming up with? Oh, Sorry yeah, I, I that, went for a theme, you see, and then I got stuck. So I went with the river. Um, so I used the word nature, but my lines were all linking to the river. So never-ending flows away from mountain tops towards the sea, unstoppable, relentlessly moving. And to be fair, that's amazing. Don't worry, no, 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 no. That, that in itself. Engaging that's our minds. Hey, hey, <laughs> right of course. That's brilliant. Oh, that's energetic. I could have just stolen this one that's on the screen. Still um, that's fine. Energetically yeah. pulsing. Yeah, I'll still, still that. Thanks, yeah, that's guys. Brilliant. You're on form. That's why I put you on the spot, Katie. So, Matthew, you've got uh, Terra, uh, Rivers, excellent and energetic. That's brilliant. Okay, let, let's move into the next one. So, that's just a tool for creativity. That's to get us in the zone for the next bit. Um, I will so mention, guys, um, as it's um, you guys and us live, if you do wish to turn your mics on and and read some of them out, you're welcome to. But yeah. I won't put the pressure on. Absolutely, Katie. I think for this one, just because the camera's off, I haven't really asked them thus far. Um, I respect the fact if you don't want to, but it's completely up to you. There's no pressure either way. Um, yeah, it's it's the op the options there. Okay. We um, will we will waffle away and fill the fill the gap. Yeah, but um, you're welcome to moment. join us if you wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a double act, me and Katie today. Um, at the end, at the end, we'll leave a space for those and um, put the mic on if those do want to share anything. Okay. So anyway, we'll go into the next bit. So next bit is regarding metaphors and double entendres, which are two techniques that are widely used within poetry and rap and creative writing in general. If you can just, yeah, that's brilliant, Katie. So um, I'm just going to ask quickly, what is a metaphor? What is a double entendre? If you don't know, I'm going to describe it in a minute anyway. I'm just genuinely curious in terms of your understanding of those words as it stands. That would be really helpful for me to know because then it would depend really how far I go into it. So if Matthew, you can just put within the chat just a few words in terms of what people think it is or indeed turn your mics on and say, by all means. I'm also aware that we're not sure whether we're chatting to year seven or yeah, yeah 10 or, and there'll be a mixture of who are watching the recordings as well so some of these things you might be familiar with um you might have heard already in english or in other lessons yeah. um maybe metaphors and double entendres you might never have heard before in your life mm. that is absolutely fine so metaphor comparing one thing to another exactly um my definition is quite similar uh so like an oxford dictionary definition just for those who want to know the absolute translational element of a, a dictionary definition um, a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action 
um, which is not literally applicable. So that's quite a wordy definition. I'll probably say it's like you said, a comparison between two things. And I would probably go as far to say uh, that are otherwise maybe unrelated. Um, so I think that's how a lot of creative writing uses it. So a lot of the time they're not related whatsoever. And yet you um, put them within a sentence or within a phrase, or within a piece of work. Um, so my room is a pigsty. It's not actually a pigsty, but it's just very messy like a pigsty is. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So have we got double entendre within the chat? That one has that one has stumped us a little bit. Double entendres. Sure. Okay. So let, let let's work on that then, because I think a lot of people know what metaphors are. Um, but for me, the double entendre within this piece in particular that I'm going to share with you is an incredible piece um, that I, I've always been inspired by it, and that's why I found out really a couple of pieces like this, particularly Mike Righteous's work, which is a rapper from the UK, brilliant rapper. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with him. He's yeah, an amazing artist. I've listened to him since I was in, in secondary school myself. So um, he's been a long form listener. A double entendre, essentially, just to give a definition again, and then I'll say really what it is based on the piece, um, is a word or phrase that is open to two interpretations, okay? So essentially, it's a subtle liter literary device that uses one statement to convey two very different meanings. So taken literally, a double entendre is usually an innocent statement that has no ironic or inappropriate overtones, right? So it doesn't have to be necessarily used as that within this piece. Um, it can be used in more of a risque setting, let's say, but we won't go into that. But this particular way it's done is within rap, is within poetry, is within spoken word. I'm now going to um, quickly demonstrate Mike Righteous's piece. So I'll just go through it quickly. And I want you to think about what Mike Righteous is talking about. The clues in the title, right? The clues in the title. But have a think as I'm going through it, really, what is he on about? He doesn't mention the word pen once. And yet it may be all about that, okay? So I used to be a pebble held in the hand of the first tribe that carved artistic patterns. On a rock of flint, they grate my sodded skin against the cave wall. These are my roots. Now your youth use me at play school. I put the pictures on the pyramids, painted on pyrus with hieroglyphics on what the Egyptians wrote the scriptures with. When evolution took place, my ancestors grew wings, tall white feathers, and you dip your head in bluing. I write for Mozart. He helped me tight to compose his music. We produced a beautiful picture of passion that was moving. Deep symphonies, without me, there'd be no history. I'm seen in literacy. I seal the deals, I wrote the rules indeed. Sorry if there's a few spelling mistakes within that. I copy and pasted it from the lyrics on genius.com, which is a rap site which goes into lyrics a bit. Um, so if you're more interested, please go on genius.com. I'm sure most of the kids would know what that is. Um, for most of your rappers, you go on the lyrics of that. Essentially why this is a brilliant piece and why you can use this as inspiration and why I have in the past, Mike Righteous is now exploring so many historic concepts, so many religious concepts. He goes on to say so many literary uh, comments and he's, he talks about in the first line, I used to be a pebble held in the hand of the first tribe that carved artistic patterns. And at the end of it, he's saying, I wrote for Mozart, he held me tight to compose his music. The essence is he's writing on behalf of a pen. He's writing as a pen is speaking. So the pen is in first person. So everything he's saying is like the pen is writing it himself. The pen is speaking to us himself, right? And he's personifying it. It's a brilliant piece that there's many examples in rap music of this. Um, some more kind of risque examples in uh, Charlie Slough, Fire in the Booth, that I'm sure most of you would have heard rap artists go on to to very um, poetic spoken word pieces that are done, contemporary spoken word pieces. So look more into this. Um, you're writing on behalf of something or talking about something completely different. Well, the whole of your piece is really, it could be about anything, right? So within the piece that you're doing in a minute, can we include a bit about this? Can we include something regarding nature? Can we include something that we've spoke about before? So some, uh, a word say river, or mountains or uh, acorn in Katie's case. But can we actually describe it using something completely different? Maybe something within your school at the moment. It's quite an advanced technique, I give you that. But as your secondary school kids and want to know more and hopefully 
um, I can I can try and provide a bit of insight in terms of creative, in terms of what I do, for instance. I use this technique a lot. So so yeah, that's that's just a, a small example of it. It's quite difficult to unpack in such a short amount of time. I could do a whole lesson on this. Um, and sorry, it's a bit here, there, and everywhere. But but hopefully you get it. And if so, I inspire you to listen to this piece in your own time. I um, really would like you to try and incorporate this into a piece, maybe not today, but going forward, maybe for the spoken word piece next week. Okay, if we can move on. And I think that first person can really cap. Katie's gone off a bit. I think what, what Katie was saying is that first person can really um, captivate you because you're personifying an object that otherwise wouldn't be personified. We wouldn't be talking about a pen um, as a person. But instead of just talking about it as a person, we're talking about the history in which the pen has uh, wrote, which is inspired. It's, it's been held in the hand of Mozart, um, the Egyptians uh, doing the hieroglyphics. It's been held in the hand of the scholars that wrote the Bible or the Quran. It's an amazing tool. And it's, it's a piece which is given the pen its kudos by personifying it um, in first person, which is quite brilliant. Okay, I think Katie's gone off. Her computer's a bit dodgy today. Um, while this has gone off, uh, Matthew, just let me know. I'm, yeah, Katie's gone off now, so it would just be me and you, Matthew, but that's fine. And, and for those who are watching this on the recording, I'm just going to do a spoken word piece of mine that I've wrote. I'll just take my guitar out. Um, can you just say yes within the chat if you can hear me okay and that Katie's absence has not completely derailed the call? So if you can just say yes before I continue, and then I will share a few pieces of art that I've done. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't really matter about the presentation. We're going on this bit anyway. So as, as you're listening, guys, so I, I do a bunch of things from um, instrumentation to singing to rap and spoken word. Um, I'm going to really showcase two pieces. The reason why I'm doing it with a guitar is just to provide a bit of instrumental in the back. Okay, quite simple instrumental. I won't do too much on the guitar um, and just listen to the words that I'm saying. Next week, for those who are going to be joining us next week, we're then going to be working on presentation of that, how we vocally try and inspire people and via our practical means. So if you're doing a performance in front of thousands of people or maybe a performance in front of your school or on a Zoom call like this, right? It enables you to really uplift the performance and pull in those various dynamics. But for the purpose of this call, I just want you to focus on some of the words. I think Katie's back. Um, Hey, Katie, that's fine. I was just saying to them, I'm going to do a performance. I was just describing the difference between next week and this week. Um, and I was waiting for you to come back. Brilliant. I'm going to do a little performance. Okay. I'll put some um, guitar in the back. Uh, as long as you can hear me good, then I'll, I'll just crack on if that's all right. Okay, so. Ever since a child, I've been fascinated by the wonder of trees, their root system and their complexity that functions for me. The mycorrhizal network, a subterranean feed, a forest communicating under the ground beneath our feet. Tree scapes that can elate us, look around and you'll all see these extraordinary organisms that produce the air that we breathe. So pivotal for the animals and insects that inhabit the home to more wildlife than any other landscape on this planet. A seed planted in the ground will grow to captivate and nourish, cultivating life so that every living thing can flourish. Carbon sequestration for every nation on this earth. Trees capture CO2 and air pollution that's dispersed. Biodiversity flourishes, the more trees will only serve. They protect against the floods and call our cities, let's preserve. And change the narrative to a positive togetherness and curve. Humanity can breathe again for our futures in these words. Okay, so that's the spoken word piece. Um, I'm gonna do a, a rap piece based on that, that I wrote, and this is for the song that I got commissioned to write, um, Force for Nature, I've got the cameras off, so if anyone's doing anything, I apologize right now, but but that's a spoken word piece that's just an example of what you can do. That rhymes, um, this can be anything, this is a great piece of writing, so it doesn't necessarily have to rhyme, but just how we try and um, put our person personable approaches to this. This is what I wanted to try and um, put forward, as well as some kind of metaphors here and there within it, but a really personable approach in terms of our writing. So um, this next piece that I'm going to do, be doing really quickly, if you can still hear me, um, is a, a rap piece that I've done. Again, I'll just do it fairly similar, but it will have a bit more of a, a speedy approach. If you want to listen to the song of this, it's Force for Nature, that's on Spotify and YouTube, etc. That's the Tree Council commissioned me to do. Um, so this is just the rap part. I'm actually talking about a friend who's going through a lot. He's going through a bit of a difficult time and really telling him that actually, for me, when I go through a difficult time, 
um, nature and the natural world is the place that I go to to have that restoration, to have that tranquility, um, which is the cornerstone to a lot of my writing particularly. Um, so this has got a masterclass element of this to try and incorporate some of my own um, uh, techniques that I use and just to give you a bit of an example of my writing style. I know this wasn't a plan, and I know what you've been through, man. But my friend just holding in there with the blows of your bed that still hurt you, man. You went through moments of cold with a broken dissolve and a focus to get back up was on hold of your jolting the road and enjoying the beauty surrounding you every day in this world. I've been there myself in the darkness, feeding alone in crowds of the largest, dealing not coping, sounding regardless, but time had allowed the catharsis. My friend, you'll get through this. The ocean reflects where the moon is. The trees for the suits we breathe, the renewed and beneath for the roots unpolluted. We need to find a deeper connection. We're sustained by the seas, not to mention. We're intrinsic and linked with the earth's on the brink of its nature that needs our attention. The shift in baseline of a system change. Chaos in the flow with the rhythmic the symbiotic interconnectedness, our perception of the planet will affect every generation's complexion. Okay, so I couldn't really hear the guitar in that. You probably couldn't as well. Um, no, no, we could. We could hear the guitar as well. That was amazing, Benjamin. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I um, I was trying to read my own lyrics on uh, one page, which is quite difficult. So I had to scroll as I was doing it. I apologise at the beginning of it. But, but yeah, that's, that's two elements of it. So... A spoken word, which is more poetic. Yes, I did do it with instrumentation in the back um, because I didn't want to do too much of the spoken word element that we're going to be focusing on next week, which is how to amplify our voice, draw people in, provide the dynamics, right? Which is what you do in rap as well on the second bit. Um, but really, words, creativity, acrostic poems, double entendres, metaphors are all examples that artists that you listen to, whether it be Stormzy, whether it be drill artists, whoever that may be, Ed Sheeran, for instance, right? They all use these techniques in terms of their writing, okay? They all use these techniques to draw the listener in, to make their pieces more engaging, to make them more inspiring, to make the listener feel interactive within their piece, okay? Um, a piece can take different forms, and that's why I uh, shared the two pieces. It can take a form like the first piece, which is very informative, which is very maybe inspirational, hopefully, very motivating about nature, while all citing my personable approaches to actually loving nature and growing up in nature. And the second piece is a word to my friends, and I'm using um, two elements within that. So I'm talking to a friend who's going through a lot, and it's almost like I'm grabbing a coffee with him. Within the music video for the song, we do this. I grab a coffee with him, we walk through a forest and we speak about these things. And I'm saying how um, beauty of the natural world, whenever I go for a walk, whether it's in the park or at the beach, it really does help um, through those difficult times. So I want you to try and make this as personal as possible. I think that's really important for a more of a mature piece. I did a primary school um, a masterclass, two masterclasses, and we didn't really focus on the personal approach too much. But I think as secondary school uh, teenagers, you're all really in tune um, with what you love, what you don't love, um, things that inspire you. And I want you to write about those and I want it to be from you. OK, so that's really important to me. And then secondly, if we can introduce some of those elements, if next week you come with a piece um, that you work on during the week that has both elements in there, there's got to be some kind of prize, hasn't there, Kaylee? Especially for double entendre. You're figuring out what it means today and then all of a sudden that. So we'll, we'll figure out that, even if it's just me, you know, us using maybe your piece um, as a part of a soundscape that we use for the exhibition, okay? But I'd love to hear it. If you can create a piece that has that personal approach and the techniques, I'll be very, very impressed indeed. So, yeah, thank you for my time. Um, thank you for listening to me. And, yeah, hopefully you have a great rest of the day. And and you enjoy that masterclass and I'll put it back onto Katie now. Cheers, guys. Yeah, so thanks so much, Benjamin, for not only sharing your expertise in terms of writing, but also what it kind of the finished piece sounds like when we hear it. And we'll be working a lot more on that in the next session. Um, but for this one, we've said for your mission, it's a poem or piece of writing about your wonder of nature. Um, and it can be whatever works best for you. And in terms of poetry, it doesn't have to rhyme. It can rhyme. Um, and if you write something that comes across like a poem, that might become more of a rap when you, we work on it in the next session. Um, it's up to you. And Benjamin's words there about how personal it is. Yours might be something about the beauty of nature, about the wonder of it, about how in your metaphors about the river, it might look like a silver ribbon on the landscape. It might be about how it looks and it's beautiful. But if your thoughts and feelings are more about concerns for nature, and you might do yours in first person as a tree, 
and about the concerns that you're having, how you're feeling, how you're seeing the landscape changing, how you're suffering, and yeah. it, then it might have that more negative tone. That's completely up to you. Um, whatever it is that it hits home most with you. So it doesn't have to be a huge piece. It can be a few lines. It could be you can do it in an acrostic style if you enjoy doing that. Um, it's completely up to you. Your own style, your own preference. Um, you've got a booklet there, so you can write it in that. And either your um, teacher can take a picture and share it by email using the email address on the screen, or you might type it up. Um, and send it to your teacher who can then forward it on to us using that email address. So whichever is most convenient for you, but we would love to hear some of your words. It would be fantastic to hear some of the things you're writing about, whether it is a river, whether it's a tree, whether it's Dirtle Door, whether it's about something else entirely that you've thought of. Now you've um, heard some more. I heard about Benjamin talking about the moon and uh, the, he's mentioned the sea. So it kind of opens up my mind to other things I might write about. So whatever it is that you wish to do, we suggest you spend about an hour working on your mission um, if you can find the time to do so. But please do send it in because it does make our day when we get these emails and get to read the wonderful work that you're doing. And as Benjamin mentioned, his next session is next week. And that is turning the words on paper into a spoken piece that really has a massive impact on the reader. And that's about helping you get your message out there to others um, with your views on nature and your opinions on where we're at and what we should be listening to in terms of your message about nature. So thank you once again for joining. You have been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your ideas in the chat. Um, it's been lovely having you here. And we do, as always, really appreciate you think, taking the time to spend with us on a busy lunchtime um, and a busy school day. So thank you. You're an amazing force for nature. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye guys. Cheers. Have a good rest of the day.